oh my gosh what's up guys welcome back to mental health monday and kevin's talking crap to me right now because on instagram i put a photo up of him looking at a box because he wanted to stop to look at this box so the caption was he wanted to look at a box so we stopped to look at the box <laughs> it was out of place i we walked back there i don't know how many times and i was like this it was a new el box electrical box. electric box it was new but I was like, where is it? Where is the wiring coming from? Is it affecting our homes? I always analyze what's going on. Why is it? I will that have to close? put it up on my YouTube channel, um, Instagram, so that you guys can see it too. It's the same name, Shatori's Life of Chaos. Anyway, yeah. um, today's subject is men and their emotions. So, I don't know. Do you want to start? I'll start. <laughs> well, she does. <laughs> This is. I hope y'all see this, right? You can see who's controlling. She, oh, she, she, he's controlling, or she's. I said controlling. you can see who's controlling. Well, she um, look at her. She, she give you a split second to decide what you want to do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what? Go ahead. Oh, mental health. Okay, so. As a, <laughs> so as a child, a oh, lot of Lord, she's boys it back. are. <laughs> they're grown to like when they grow up they're taught not to cry so let's say they fall down and hurt themselves they're quickly hushed and it's supposed to act as if they're not hurt except like if say they had a sister that fell and the same thing happened that she would be like coddled but if a boy falls down they're kind of expected to rebound faster and man up and not cry despite having the same fall and it still hurts. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it hurts. And your natural reaction would be to cry if it hurts. So a lot of times, starting from a very young age, boys are hushed. And then they're taught to be hushed men. So they don't talk or they don't speak about their emotions. In light of the recent tragedy with Kobe Bryant, I saw a lot of men showing their true emotions and how they felt. You could see that they were honestly hurt about what happened as anybody would if they had come across him or known him and even for me it was a sad situation and I didn't even know him but just imagining his family waking up and missing two of their members so I can totally understand but it was good for me to see uh, a bunch of men owning their emotions saying that they loved each other and embracing each other and supporting each other in that way because it's taught that you're not supposed to be feeling emotions and you're supposed to like just suck it up and deal with whatever you're feeling at the time. So my question to you is when you were younger, how were you, how was it taught to you that you were supposed to be like growing up? I remember I think as a little kid and I heard a song and I cried about it. It was like, I think I was probably, I think I was like four or five and I remember them, I thought they thought something was wrong and they got mad at me for crying because you felt emotionally moved by this song yeah and yeah and that's that was my first i remember that stage forward uh, kind of been my first my first one of my first real reactions that was shut down as far as feeling that emotion or feeling the way i wanted to feel at that particular time and then from that point forward it was mainly um I wasn't taught to really identify how I was feeling. It was always a lot of it was just a lot of frustration and anger and that's all I I knew. And then later on in life, I realized a lot of it was just pain and hurt. You know what I mean? So So do you feel from, that they accepted your anger more than they accepted your emotion? I think it was more accepted anger. Um, because I didn't know how to or to express. You know what I mean? And I didn't feel but let's just say you were able to cry and it was normalized in your household. I think it would have, you know, if it was normalized at that time, I think it would have been easier for the process. Especially going into adulthood and um, having a hard time expressing myself. Um, and that caused me problems throughout my life because they're like, you could have said this at this point, but you wait till it gets to this point and then it's, it's like a, a, a light, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, I think a lot of things would have been, you know, uh, done differently. Um, if, if, you know, you were taught properly how to process things. 
uh, because a lot of things, a lot of situations would end up went down if that was the case. And, um, and I was like, oh, I'm feeling this way. Or even as an adult now, I have a hard time expressing things. And then when I express something, it's like, what? <laughs> you go through that because he'll express things outwardly at first as anger. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, it sounds like you're actually hurt. Mm -hmm. And then after a while and he thinks back and then he'll be like, yeah, I was actually hurt mm -hmm. by this situation. But it was easier for him to connect with the emotion of anger than it was the emotion of hurt because mm -hmm. it was something that wasn't taught to be embraced when he was younger. So a lot of men go around with these kind of like a chip on their shoulder type feeling. Mm -hmm. It's emotional for us men. Mm -hmm. It's taught that it's found a weakness. Well, yeah, and that's and a big like, part you know, of it. Sign, it's a sign of weakness, and you, if you feel a certain way, it's a sign of weakness. And and now it's crazy. In recent times, it, oh, man, I need to express. Because a lot of guys, unfortunately, were internalized in so much mess. And as they got older, they unfortunately um, have heart attacks due to that. There's so, a lot of internal things that happen to you. Oh, yeah. You hold in your emotions yeah. a lot of things happen internally so what isn't expressed outwardly will be expressed mm -hmm. inwardly but you won't know until it's too late so there will be a slew of health issues that are connected to your emotions and a lot of men suffer from those things yeah I've, I've come across that as I gotten older um, internalizing things and say like know. ulcers high yeah. blood pressure I've come across you know. that because if you don't take if you don't express it right and you internalize it, it, your body reacts bad to it. So it's like, oh, you know, if you don't take care of it, if you don't express it in a healthy fashion, um, it's it wrecks havoc on you internally, and also it wrecks havoc on your relationships, things like that. So I think it's it's, it's healthy to express uh, whatever's going on in a healthy manner and talk it out mm -hmm. at times. Cause sometimes it just warrants a conversation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you want to make sure, because I've been in situations where things could have been, you know, just talked out of me not expressing how I was feeling and not feeling like it's going to be validated anyway. You know what I mean? So if you're feeling that way, it's not what's the point of speaking. And by the time something that could be so small, it becomes a mountain of misunderstanding yeah. of amplified issues that should have been like, you know what, at this level here, um, this is what happened. This is what needs to. This is what the confusion is. And before you know it, all the energy that you wasted of just kicking things under the rug could have been and moved on to something better. You know what I mean? So I think um, it's good for for men to express themselves. And honestly, I don't feel that's a sign of weakness. Kevin did bring up like the meme of Michael Jordan. We don't remember why he was crying. Crying, yeah. But it was it circulated throughout the internet forever. Yeah. And it sucks that you can't show emotion without you know, as a man without it being made into something that is a joke or a mockery or something like that. I just want all the men out there to know that I hope you're with the right person that allows you to open up that space where you can be vulnerable and cry with them and show an emotion because it's already hard enough when you walk out the doors, they expect one demeanor from you. Mm -hmm. And then when you are at home, you should be able to take the mask off that you wear throughout the day and be vulnerable with your spouse or significant other. And mm -hmm. hopefully you have that safe, safe space because people carry the societal norms and they're like, well, men act this way, women act this way. And that's not always the case it's just you know what I mean we all have we're born with the same emotions and feelings and just because you're male doesn't mean that you should have to shut them down because it's not fair to you and it's not fair to your process your emotional process if you're not allowed to process these things it can develop into anything else alcoholism resorting to drugs anything yeah, because you don't down, yeah, yeah if you don't have an outlet a healthy outlet to be like you know what I do feel sad and that should be okay you know what I mean it shouldn't be something that where you feel like I can't be sad because I'm a man or I can't show this or I can't shed a tear because of this it shouldn't be like that so I just want everyone to know that if you're with someone that judges you for that then you're not with the right person because it's just it's not right at the end of the day um, what do you say people were call you sensitive 
Oh, I get mad because I'm like. <laughs> but what's wrong with being sensitive? Like, what honestly? What's wrong with being sensitive? You're tying it to a weakness because of a societal norm. And and that's true. Because it's like, well. What about Ralph Tresvant? You need a oh, man. Oh Lord, really? You taking it back to ninety ninety? No, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made it normal. That was my jam too. I love that song. <laughs> really? Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, to all those that don't know, he's part. He was part of New Edition. Yeah, you young the heads out there. I'm just yeah. <laughs> but um, so what you're tying into a societal norm then. You're getting mad because yeah, that's you're true. I've had somebody come to tell me before. It's like <laughs> I can tell you're sensitive and you let too many things get to you, and and then you know he's like, you gotta let it roll off your back. Because it's just going to eat you alive in the long run, you know? So. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, that's one of my, my uh, when people said that to me, I get mad because I'm like, like, I'm a strong person. But what but does that I, mean? When, I, what, when you hear sensitive, what are you actually hearing? Because I hear somebody that's I, When I hear something, what, I, what I've been told, um, uh, what I've condi I was been conditioned is um, when you say you're sensitive, that's saying you're weak. And that used to cause fights with me coming up. So that's to me. So you're like, I'm going to prove I'm not sensitive and weak. I'm going to show you by fighting with you. And that, that was coming. I mean, that was no, know, as that, a kid, you yeah, know. But yeah. that's, what I, that's what was projected on us on the playground. That was projecting us as we grew older. And, um, and that's why, you know, it's good to challenge those things as far as... Uh, um, it's not to me. It's not a show of weakness to express how you feel about things. To me, it is. So I can call you sensitive, and you're not going to be like f you. Because <laughs> I feel like you're calling me weak. But what if I'm just saying you're sensitive? You're in touch with your feelings. Because I feel like you're saying I'm weak. I'm going to tell you guys a story about this guy. Oh Lord, <laughs> here we go. No, this is for real, for real. Oh, here we go. <laughs> when I first met him, mm -hmm. we hadn't known each other very, very long mm -hmm. at all. But we met and he had things going on internally that he hadn't dealt with yet. So there was a time that we were talking, we were about to part ways, and all the emotions erupted inside of him for mm -hmm. things that he hadn't dealt with the previous year. And he just started coming out with everything mm -hmm. and he cried and everything but you could tell that it was something that was building up over time mm -hmm. and that he needed to release mm -hmm. i didn't see anything wrong with it i just kind of you know what i mean like obviously it was something that he didn't talk about the way that it just came out it felt like something he had never talked about or he didn't talk about that often mm -hmm. So I didn't see you as weak in that moment. I just saw you as somebody that needed to get something off your chest that you were dealing with for some time that you yeah. have inside of you. I mean, that particular time, it just I went from, I and mean, we, we knew, you know, at, at that particular time, you know, I just came to a new environment. Also had, like I said, like she said, I had been dealing with things and joining the service at that time, I was in the service and early on 20, 19, 20 years old and I had a lot of things that I hadn't dealt with and um, so when she met me she had to peel off the layers and deal. It didn't take him as long as I would have thought seeing the way he carried himself I would have thought it would have been a battle for a while for me to like chip away at things mm -hmm. but it didn't take that long to peel back you know I think I got under one layer uh -huh. and then it just all kind of opened up. I mean, you, you want to have, like, like she said, you want to have that a safe, a safe space. I mean, at that particular time, even now, you want to have that <clears throat> safe environment where you can talk, talk to people or talk to whoever, you know, show that side of you that, hey, you know, there's things that we can resolve, things I like to talk about, and just, you need a listening ear, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and she was that person for me, so... Um, it helped me process things um, better because there have been times when I, I wasn't around the right people to process what was going on. So I had to keep it to myself and then when I get around somebody I feel that I can talk to and open up to at that particular time, I would talk to and open up, you know, because it's, it's, it's one thing to go around and feel like you cannot speak, you know what I mean? And before you know it, um, it creates problems because if you can't speak up, 
about how you feel about certain things and later on in life it hinders you because you can't even speak up for yourself because you know what oh, this is not this is bothering but I'm not gonna speak about it because I was taught whatever I said wasn't wasn't valid you know coming up so um, you know we'll build up you know what I mean so you don't um, we ran into that a lot because he wouldn't say things that were bothering him, like say in the workplace or somewhere out in town, mm -hmm. and he will come to me and say it, and I'm like, I can't, you can't do nothing I can't more. do anything yeah. right now. And the situation had already passed, you dealt with it how you dealt with it, but he would just keep it like closed mm -hmm. and not say anything and just bring it to me. And that even goes for a lot of things, medically, like everything, he wouldn't complain about anything, but to me, and I'm like, I'm not the right person. I can't give you medication. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, you know, she's and, my safe spot, you know, that's the thing, you know. I watched Kevin Hart's video, mm -hmm. um, his series on Netflix. There was a part where he was speaking about how his father addressed him. And in a way he was like, you know, pretty much calling him weak if he wasn't like playing sports and doing this mm -hmm. and doing that. He saw this societal norm for his son and his son didn't take that path. So he pretty much was like, oh, you're weak. But they had that balance between their emotions, which mm -hmm. we all need, honestly, because I, if I was out in the world like I normally am, I would be a mess. You know what I mean? So you need some kind of balance in your life to balance out the emotions so that you can function because obviously we can't yeah. you know what I mean but you do need to be able to express yourself at the same time so I think fathers put a lot of pressure on their sons because they were put that that pressure was placed on them to act a certain way and then it just continues on where you have a whole family of men that don't express themselves. and said that the most emotional time for men was during sporting events so he would see an array of emotion from men during these sporting events because that's the only time it was acceptable for them to show mm -hmm. this array of emotion but at the end of the day i hope that you guys have somebody that you can open up to and don't go by societal norms because it's just a bunch of bs if you ask me yeah because you know what i realize that with societal norms it's 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 things that put in place someone else it's someone else's covered level of what they can tolerate that was placed on society mm -hmm. rock to the beat of your own drum i've done it i'm okay you know i have my moments but i'm okay and you know to you i hope that you feel like you can be over mm -hmm. And identify your actual emotion because that's important. Uh, identify my actual emotions. Yeah, because you can't just go straight to mad for everything. Like, not everything makes you just mad. Are you really that mad? Are you really that angry? Yeah, I wake up and it's mad. So she's somebody. I, I woke up this morning and she was, I couldn't even be mad this morning because she woke up and she's like, I can't believe this is going on after this the the passing. Yeah. So. Oh, right. I, didn't you, I, didn't I was like, were you mad? Yeah, I know she kissed me. <laughs> I wasn't, yeah, I, was, I didn't come back. This is like, what's going on? And she told me the situation of what, after her detox from social media on Sunday, so she didn't watch anything until this morning. Oh, hold on one second. So, okay, she, her detox from social media on Sunday, so Monday, she, she didn't watch anything until Monday morning, and she's looking like, wow, all this is going on. I heard about it. We were at brunch with the family at the table, and then Kimana's like, Kobe died, and I'm like, who's Kobe? You know, thinking it was someone she knew or a YouTuber or somebody yeah. from Instagram. And she was like, Kobe Bryant. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then she was like, oh, a helicopter. And we're just sitting there like in shock at the table. Like, mm -hmm. what? That's crazy. And I can't remember the last name. I want to say Alto Belli. I don't remember. I don't want to mess it up. But... Um, they lost, you know, a husband, wife, and child. Mm -hmm. There were other people on this plane that had lost their lives as well. So I send out my condolences to everyone that was involved in this situation because they make it sound like it was just yeah, Kobe it was just him and, and Gianna. And in our, our, you know, in our families and all that stuff, we don't always have like positive role models. So we look to people that are famous to be those role models, and. 
when you're following somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to be like this person, but say at home, you have a different type of thing going on and you look to that person as a positive beacon, like, hey, I could be like that one day. He made it from a bad situation, so can I. She made it from a bad situation, so can I. So they're important in our community. These people that you're just like, oh, they're idolizing so-and-so. Yes, that might be the truth, okay? But at the same time, they're important for our community because they show people that came from a similar environment and made it out. Mm -hmm. And that's all that people need is hope. Like, hey, there is hope. I don't have to go on this path. I don't have to do things this way. I can change directions and do this instead. So people like Kobe, people like... All the people that we've lost symbolizes hope. Um, you guys hug your loved ones tonight. Tell everyone that they, you love them. And yeah, just uh, we appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Um, guys, it's okay to you know, express all your love to your loved ones. Who cares? Like say, I love you. It's, it should be normalized hug them kiss them normalize like none of that stuff should be like i feel weird kissing my kid or i feel weird kissing my wife or significant other or whatever you know you talking about subscribing one time to people yeah one time so you need is one time subscribe and all of a sudden How, you only need to subscribe one time <laughs> <laughs> wow this How, is what? What is this? An extended version of the video? This is, like, yeah, this is the, the the behind the scenes because he talking about Kiara's video, uh, <laughs> and he was like, she did a live last night, and all I did was subscribe one time. I was like, why is it coming up on my phone? Like, what is this? Because he watched her do a clothing haul where she changed clothes a whole bunch of times. Oh, Lord, and he... I did not watch that. <laughs> yeah, I did, are not, you? I did not watch that. What are you, what are you talking about? You are you gonna lie on camera? No, so you, it, it, came, it came on my thing, but I didn't but watch it. <laughs> You're messed up. I think Change I stopped watching it when they were, they were when she was still with her husband. So I was like, oh, okay. This when is she was doing those fashion overhauls, she was not with this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. He watches, he only watches her fashion overhauls. Oh, Lord, it's far from it. She that could be edited. Yeah, edit that. Because you know, people will be like, what are you saying? This YouTubers talking mess? And I'm like, it's like, nah. I like it when they were together. Honestly, I like it. We, gotta, we gotta let it go. Yeah, I know. We gotta let it go. They're not together anymore. They're doing their own thing separately. We gotta let it go. But we will always, always, always shout them out for getting us moving. <laughs> yeah, we use them as, as, a, as a blueprint. We was watching them go from Alaska to Texas, and honestly, yeah, that was my motivation. She was, she was my motivation, so. Yeah, when I saw her husband in the, in, and what was he, in the, his little makeshift studio, slash closet. It was like, a closet. He wanted a whole room to himself, and I was like, Desmond only got a closet. I was like, wait. All he did I, was put a, a poster in I the saw, back. I went to Michael's, man, and I saw a lot of ideas for a, a straight. For your closet? Ain't nobody's closet. I'm like, that garage can be. That's half my workout gym place. That's my workout place. Half, That's my workout place. I want to bring radio, TV, another TV in there. I want to put some some pictures, more pictures on my side. What'd you put pictures of? I'm, I mean, Michael's had a bunch of stuff there. Like, I wanted to put some of my old military He's stuff. He's trying on. to, like. Yeah, you don't want that? I mean, put my old veteran stuff there. <laughs> She's, like, <laughs> She's like, I don't want to hear this. Military stuff. This is why. This is why. That's all my stuff is in the box on the, on the door. I'm not gonna door, but the wall. I'm like, what the hell? Fit my 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 ribbon box. I gave you a ribbon box. <laughs> wow. Wow! Yeah, she's like, what do you need? I, I mean, I have a little gang of awards that's sitting in a folder. Okay, you can have it in the garage then. Yeah. I have a gang of awards. I can put it. I gotta put it in the I frame. I have it in the garage then. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but a Cause slew. see, the one side where the treadmill is is my side. I got Bob Marley over there, Muhammad Ali over there, and my family over mm. there. Those are the things that keep me focused. Okay, focus. So when I'm working out, I see Muhammad Ali, and he is like, "I am the greatest," and I'm like, "Me too." And then when I see my grandparents, they're like, "Keep going, girl," and then I'm like, "I will." And when I see my kids, they say the same thing. Okay, and when I see Bob Marley, he's like, "Just chill. Like, don't worry about it." 
You know what I'm saying? Just chill. That's awesome motivation, you're right. Hmm? That's awesome motivation, you know, right? It is. <laughs> well, what's your motivation? Listening to what? Listen to C.T. Fletcher. <laughs> I have artists. not heard C.T. Fletcher in his house. You he haven't heard? I was playing before. I'm I playing before I get in, in the gym. What gym? I mean, in, the, in our garage. He don't barely work out. Don't let him fool you. How many times do you use a treadmill for real, for real? Like, since we've had it, probably good four or five times. I'm on it every day. Yeah, she is. She's on it every day. I, t I take my walks. But I, I'm how not often, a, I'm, how often I do you take walks? I should be more proactive because I used to be a monster in the gym. So He used to be broke down. Let me tell you. But, he, no, he used to be really, like, honestly, he had this log, okay? <laughs> This mother freaking log that he would take everywhere and I'm like you need to stop doing that because like my shoulder hurts and I'm like yeah. Carrying like this 20 pound log and running up the damn hill with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna it's gonna hurt. Yeah <laughs> And then, a lot of intense training and things like he that. He got mad when I threw it away. Yeah, but, I was mad cause I was like what the hell cuz I I mean I enjoyed switching up my training. I, I mean, like that he switched it up but like I'm like do some jump roping or do something different that doesn't require you to break your shoulder every yeah. single day. And for by switching it up he just switches the side the logs on. Don't think he's out <laughs> here, don't think he's out here doing something different with it. No, he's just out here just switching the side. I mean, I honestly and I mean I built that thing and my son helped me fix so I mean I I know in the long at long term yes I should have toned it He's down. He's mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for through, through the VA, so yeah, <laughs> they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna get my legs stronger again. So I'm like, talk to me, sexy. He's like, I got a VA appointment today. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Okay. <I'm> <laughs> I'm trying to take care of myself. That's pretty much what it well, is. Tell me something dirty. Today at 3.30, I'm going to get my sinuses checked. <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> you messed up. Yeah, this is us behind the scenes. Okay, we're really going to leave this time. All right. So, tell them bye. Be nice. Peace. And the middle ladies, for real, for real. They need peace out there. Um... Yeah, we love you. Bye.